Hi everyone, it's Emma from Lychee Pink Planner. Um, thank you very much for coming back and looking at my little videos. I will just give people a bit of a heads up. Um, I'm going to be discussing something which for many they may find a little bit upsetting. Um, to coin a phrase, it may be a bit of a trigger warning. Um, I am going to be discussing um, fertility and miscarriage. Not for too long, but just something that I wanted to talk about because it's recently been in the news. And I do believe that it is something that does need to be more openly discussed. Um, I'm now about to start talking about that. So if it's something that you're not ready to listen to or it's something that you just don't want to listen to, then I would skip most of this video. I will put a timestamp in somewhere around here um, when I actually stop talking about this particular subject. So if that's you, see you in a few minutes and thank you uh, for <laughs> making the choice that suits you. So... Uh, this week, um, Meghan Markle, um, the Duchess, I never get, is she the Duchess of Sussex? I am terrible. I know the Duchess of Cambridge anyway. I've started to waffle already. Um, has very bravely come out and discussed that she has had a miscarriage. Um, I believe that it is something that needs to be spoken about and love or hate the Duchess because I know that many people are kind of like on the shelf about how they feel about her. She certainly knows how to break down barriers for good or for bad. Uh, she's been criticised for trying to, you know, walk in Diana's footsteps or that she just won't toe the line, etc, etc. Um, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I'm here to discuss the fact that I feel that she's been very, very brave in talking about this. Now, the statistics are that between every woman, I think it's something like one in four, or it's between 10 and 20 out of 100 women um, that become pregnant will suffer a miscarriage. Now, a miscarriage, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, is uh, detailed as a loss um, of um, a fetus under 24 weeks. I believe that from 24 weeks and above, um, it is then uh, categorised um, as a stillbirth, obviously, depending on if there was medical intervention. Um, and those under 24 weeks are basically, and I hate to word it like this, but they're, they're, they're kind of like swept under the rug. Um, they don't have to be registered. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, and it's absolutely horrific that we're in the year 2020. And even though the year 2020 has been nothing but unkind to us, we still don't talk about this openly. And we don't talk about the pain that goes along with that and how it's almost blasé um it's often when it is brought up in conversation just kind of like spoke about very quickly um and you know it, it's very much a woman's problem and we need to understand that yes women do go through loss but also in this case, as, as Meghan Markle, you know, clearly said that, you know, she was in a partnership and they both experienced that loss. Um, I'm going to share some private information um, because not that I'm looking for anyone, you know, to, to have sympathy or anything else. But I think it's, you know, it, it's a part of having these conversations and I'm doing it in the most public way possible. <laughs> I've gone from one extreme to the other. Um, here is, now I'm hoping that the light is going to reflect this okay because these have all been um, sellotaped in. So I've been going through a trying to conceive journey. Um, I'm only going to show you this particular one because um, again, you know, there are certain things that I will still keep private. Uh, for many of you that have been or are going through the trying to conceive journey, you will very much be aware of what these little sticks are. 
these are LH Surge or, and I hope I pronounce it correctly, Luthensing Hormone. Uh, the Luthensing Hormone is uh, a surge which take place before an ovum is released from your ovaries. Um, ideally, you will... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to say this bit a bit delicately. You will time having um, your... I'm just going to be adult about it and just say you will time having sex around the time that your luthensing hormone is at its peak. Hopefully then the sperm will meet the egg and they will become fertilised and then the egg will then go in to implant itself into the uterine wall and become a viable pregnancy. Um, when you're on your TTC journey, many women like to log and to keep um, a track of when they're ovulating because we're not all blessed with regular periods as, as much as sex education told us that it'd be bang on every 28 days. That doesn't happen always in real life. Um, I myself have experienced two uh, miscarriages and one which is classified as a blighted ovum. This particular month here uh, was the blighted ovum month. Now what happens with a blighted ovum is that the egg becomes fertilised and it does attach itself to the uterine wall. What happens from there is that there may be cells um, that are not forming correctly, there could be an issue with the egg, there could be an issue with the spermatosa, but essentially the body doesn't necessarily instantly recognise um, that that ovum is no longer growing um, and is not thriving within the uterus. Uh, with this particular one, I had an early positive uh, pregnancy test and I was as happy as Larry. Obviously, <laughs> sat on the toilet, peed on the stick with my husband and felt absolutely elated. Um, kept peeing on a stick for a few days because when you go through this journey, your, your mind is always on the worst case scenario, especially when you've been trying for a very, very long time or if you've experienced a loss before. And this particular time, I noticed that the line that I had, which said uh, positive pregnancy, was becoming paler. Um, and it worried me because whenever you read uh, in forums, etc., etc., the line becomes darker because you produce more hormone, which makes that line darker. Uh, progesterone peaks. Progesterone is the pregnancy hormone. Um, and the more of that that you have, obviously, you know, the, the stronger the line becomes. Um, this was over lockdown um, and I contacted my GP and I said, look, I'm, I'm concerned. We've been trying to conceive um, and something's not right. Um, my period still hasn't arrived. But at this point, basically, I'd gone from having a positive pregnancy test to now a negative. And the GP was wonderful. I, 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 I cannot fault my GP. And he explained that basically uh, my body needs to catch up uh, with what has happened uh, within my uterus and that nature will take its course and that eventually I will bleed and that at one point... Um, I was pregnant, my body recognised that, sent out all the hormones and was preparing um, everything for this um, egg to, to grow. But unfortunately, we'll never know what it was, you know, could have been chromosome, who knows. Um, but basically that the, the pregnancy wasn't viable and I had to wait for my body to catch up and... I had to wait to bleed again and it was absolutely agonising, absolutely agonising to know that, to know that something had failed and to not know what had failed. Was it me? Was it something to do with my husband's spermatosa? Had I done something wrong? Was it the stress of lockdown? 
what was it? Um, I'll also be very open. Um, I'm approaching 37. Um, <laughs> I am technically, um, they now call it ad advanced maternal age, or they used to call it geriatric. Um, <laughs> ger it always makes me think of that part from Bridget Jones, where um, she says about geriatric mothers. Um, but technically, that that's where I fall. I'm very late on this uh, trying to conceive my second child journey that is something that plays heavily on my mind and of course when I was reading the article that Meghan Merkel had wrote I noticed that at the bottom of the BBC article they they wrote about they you know they just wrote a very basic blog of why it could have happened and I feel conflicted by one of the things that was written at the bottom and at the bottom it even it it even says that, you know, that the Duchess is 39 years old, okay? And then they, they wrote this tiny little blog that it's more likely to happen in older women and then they put a particular age. I can't remember what they wrote um, because as women get older, um, their egg stock is poorer, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And for me, that, that, that felt like... Um, I don't... I'm trying to think of the words to describe it, but I felt like it was almost like a dig at her. And any woman who has waited, maybe, you know, they've done their career, maybe they've done travelling, maybe they haven't been in a relationship, you know, up until they're in their late 30s or haven't felt committed. And it felt like this was almost like, a, well, that's the reason why it happened. And that isn't always the case. Many, many women who are of advanced maternal age successfully become pregnant and have health, healthy pregnancies. I know that it is something that is a risk, but also it, it just felt like it was kind of like shaming, you know, th this little paragraph at the end, this, you know, this piece that she'd wrote about her heartache and her pain. And then it was like, yeah, but this is probably the reason why. And that didn't feel like it was necessary. Um, so that's kind of like, uh, the end of, of what I wanted to say, really. Um, if anyone obviously is affected, uh, by miscarriage or problems with trying to conceive, etc., etc., I will leave a few little, uh, links of things, things that have helped me in, the, you know, in the past, um, you can always send me a message um, on Instagram if it's something that you want to talk about. I'm not a medical professional. All I can say is from, you know, my experience um, and my feelings of absolute utter devastation. And I'm happy to be an ear for somebody if they want to talk about it. But I will leave professional links down below. So moving on to happier things. Uh, I'd really like to know what people thought about The Crown. I have binged and I have watched every single episode of The Crown. And wow, uh, Gillian Anderson's portrayal of Margaret Thatcher, I thought was absolutely perfect. I thought it was spot on. I know, again, uh, her character has always been a master character. No, she was a real person. But Gillian Anderson's portrayal um, of Thatcher uh, was a little bit marmite. Some people didn't like it. Some people have absolutely loved it. But of course, the main story that, that, that starts to come through is the Charles, Camilla and Diana. I'd really like to know people's thoughts on that. Um, was it fairly portrayed? Do you think that Charles in The Crown has been given a fair crack at the whip? What about Camilla? Um, and what about the eating disorder? They went more on the eating disorder than what I actually thought that they would do. Um, I think they've been very brave with that because it was something that Diana kept a secret for a long, long time. And obviously that is, you know, portrayed in this storyline. What I want to know and what I hope in season five and six, which has now been confirmed, um, that they will then touch on the recovery of that. Um, but it did feature more heavily than what I was expecting, um, to be very honest. And... The last episode, I don't know if anybody else felt like this, but I was disappointed. If that was meant to be a cliffhanger, it didn't really leave me feeling like I want more. Because I want more anyway, because I'm invested in this series. But that ending between 
uh, Prince Philip and Diana almost felt anticlimactic. I don't know if anybody else felt like that. And apologies, <laughs> that is just purely my opinion. It felt anticlimactic for me. Um, please, you know, leave your thoughts um, down below. I'd really like to be able to discuss it. It's something that I, I really love watching. Onwards, onto the plan with me bit. So, I've lined up my typewriter. I have already put the stickers in um, because I felt that maybe it was going on a little bit too long with me putting in some of the stickers. Uh, this kit, um, again, I'm using a beautiful kit from Oodle Madoodles. Um, as you all know by now, I'm part of the creative team. I'm very proud to be a part of that creative team uh, because I love everything about the whole story of Oodle Madoodles and the fact that Grace, uh, she is one hell of a lady boss. She's an NHS nurse. She's an NHS hero. And she still does all of this. On top of that, you've got the, the, the chief packer who is paid in chocolate. I mean, who doesn't want that job? I'd, I'd happily be paid in chocolate to, to do a job. And then uh, Grace's brother, who is also part of the team, does a lot of the IT side of it. And I just love the fact that it, it, it's a family unit. So I'm really, really proud to be part of that. And we put in input and ideas for layouts and functional bits and, and those kind of things. And it's something that um, I've absolutely adored doing. Um, I believe that come February time, I would have been on the creative team for a year so there was two um um applications um i was successful with the first one um it was obviously extended because of covid um poor grace was very very busy um and then um i've been successful with the second time round uh, which is the autumn winter which should take us into march so i'll be a part of the creative team until march this particular kit is for the mini dashboard and i hope <laughs> i'm getting the name right it's called stay home uh, and i thought it's really really appropriate for the last week because apparently we're all coming out of lockdown december the 2nd well say coming out i don't think a lot of us really have many plans <laughs> to do anything because the weather has been absolutely trash but i felt that this was just appropriate um because it it's got the whole stay home theme anyway onwards and upwards come on emma get your butt into gear and get typing. So let's start with my dinner plans. And I hope I've lined this up right. Come on, let's do this. Oh, and while I'm doing this, um, I did have a quick, oh no! <laughs> I did have a question as to um, typing on the cursive typewriter. I absolutely love it, but I need to get this part fixed. Um, the, I think, I hope I pronounced this right. I think it's called the plantain, or I just call it the roller because I'm simple like that. Um, when typing on it, it feels like I'm typing on a brick um, and I need to get it. Uh, basically, it needs to be re-rubbered uh, because it's very, very old. And I, I can only assume that actually it had been very, very used. And when typing, if it feels like rubber on the other side, sometimes uh, these go through and they actually pierce the other side of the paper. Um, and I, I, it's not that I can't be doing with it, but I don't want my work, you know, I don't want the, <laughs> I, do you know what? I cannot think of the words I've been rattling on for so long. I've now forgot the, let's just call them keys. I don't want them to go through and penetrate the paper and then add more damage on the other side because it can also damage the, you know, the keys and that particular typewriter being cursive, it's even harder to replace now. So for the time being, I'm using my trusty royal royal light i really need to like think of a name for my typewriters i don't know i'll have a, have a have a think oh if you've got a suggestion again put it in the comments right so monday chicken wrap <laughs> let's do this chicken wrap and then gonna have something on tuesday which in my family we call t a t take away tuesday when oh did that go back to where it should be yeah excuse me i'm just going to have a quick sip of my tea and i'm going to move away from the speaker because no one wants to hear me gulp because it's a big cup and unfortunately the gulping noise just happens hopefully you didn't hear me gulp 
Okay. My son picked what we would have for dinner on Wednesday. He wanted an American themed dinner, which consists of, oh, that wasn't too bad on the ding. I'm getting better at lining these up. Uh, hot dogs and burgers. Oh, come on. I always forget this. That doesn't look right though, does it? What's happened there? Okay. Uh, Thursday, having a bit of a posh dinner, having salmon, where's the at symbol, I always forget, there we go, and pasta, Friday, I feel I need to go one more, oh, I'm worried now, right now, go back up, go back up, um, oh we've got double fish I've planned this week and then Friday is of course fishy Friday um that's better thank you Saturday was another one picked by my son and he wants a full full English See? Yeah. There we go. And it's that time of year. It's a roast on Sunday. Um, question. In between while I'm doing all of this. How many eggs do you put in your Yorkshire puddings? Personally, in this house, we're a three to four. Just putting it out there. How many eggs do you put in your Yorkshire puddings? Just, again, comment down below. Okay. Oh, no, if I don't do that, look. I'll go across there in a moment. Have I got anything to write in here? I can't remember. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to get some masking tape in future just to line up down these because they catch regardless of what I do. It looks like <laughs> everything that I need to write is going to be all on this side. Yeah, okay. So, back we go. Come on. I don't believe I have any plans for Tuesday. Um, it's somebody's birthday on Monday. I'm not going to type this in um, at the moment because they may not want their birthday <laughs> shared with the entire world. So, let's hope I do this right. Let's line this back up about there. Oh, I forgot. There we go. Oh, I do it every single time. To be able to line the second one up, I need to get that about there. Okay, I'm going to go for about... Yeah. Let's try that. About 54 to about 70. Whew, fingers crossed. As much as it is a teeny-weeny bit stressful, I love it. I still love it. I love typing in. The noise is just so therapeutic to me. There we go. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> mm -mm -mm, that ding tells me I can go a little bit longer. Yep, there we go. And as we scroll down... Guess what day this is? It's a very, very important day. <laughs> sort of. It is. Black Friday. Oh, this is going to be 
is this going to overlap? Ooh. Oh, oh, that wasn't bad at all. Oh, <laughs> I'm quite impressed with that myself. Collecting my dad's laptop this week because he's invested in a new one and got to go into it, get all the passwords off, set up the other one. So he's all ready to go. Literally, he's leaving it on the doorstep. I'm collecting it from the doorstep, taking it home, doing all the bits and pieces that I need to and then returning it when I then go shopping in that area, which is going to be on the Sunday. Right. Um, duh. Turn laptop. Okay. So that is that done. Not the most productive of weeks, but it is what it is, isn't it? Okay. Now this is where I always get it wrong. And I literally have to sit here, you know, and I go, right, if I want to type on that side, I need to <laughs> Turn it around, that way up. So then now if I do that, that will come out the wrong way round. And then I go that, and then it will fold up. Yay, there we go. I will get it right. I will get it right. As you can see, I skipped planning last week. Um, just wasn't in the mood, you know. I'm, I'm happy to admit that. The mood didn't take me. Had a little bit of a, I don't know, I suppose you would call it not a mental health blip but really didn't have a lot going on my son uh was in isolation so i just focused on that planning doesn't have to be perfect far from it and i think sometimes we need to forgive ourselves here we go let's go across there is that about right or oh, get in there, get in there. Let's go there. Yes, that will do nicely. Thank you very much. Okay. I've made my Christmas cakes. I'm going to insert a little uh, video of just uh, basic what I was doing. In the end, I made two, four, six, eight, maybe ten. I think it's eight. Do you know what? I can't remember because I actually I actually made them two weeks ago um, and then I was going to do some planning and, and bits and pieces. I, I, I did make a video because actually what I did was this and I made the video and then I lost all of the footage. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, rats. So I'm now going to insert the video of me doing my Christmas cakes and then this bit will then kind of like go in there because I'm going to do... Uh, they've had what I call like their, their next bath of amaretto and then next week they're going to have another bath of amaretto and then realistically I would say looking at my month the last time I will give them a bath will be week commencing the 14th of December and then I will be decorating them around about the 17th to the 18th no 16th I would say um and then they will be going on to their recipients because um, I, with some of my gifts, some people are, you know, I will make them a cake and give them some jam, that kind of thing for, for Christmas. And then I will, if anyone's interested, I will do a little bit of a vlog of me doing those bits and pieces. <laughs>
right, this video is like 29 minutes long so far. <laughs> Crack on. So I need to buy some icing. I hope I spell this right. Marzi Pan. I'm sure that if I spelt it wrong, people will let me know. Marzi Pan. It makes me want to ask you know who. Okay, Google. How do you spell marzipan? I think there's another I marzipan in it. Marzipan is spelled M-A-R-Z-I-P-A-N. For the win. <laughs> she By was saying, way, oh. I can now translate back and forth. Oh. Just say, be my French interpreter. Oh, that's lovely. But I'm okay for French at the moment. So, marzipan, Anna spelt it right. Oh, yay, win for the week. <laughs> Do you have days where you look at something and you're like, I know how to spell this, but it doesn't look right. And then you ask somebody else and then you feel like a complete plonker because they look at you and they go, T-H-E. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I knew that, but um, so, so that was my, <laughs> that was just my moment. And with that, I forgot what else I needed to buy. I need to buy some... Uh, Icing, marzipan. Oh, my days. What else was it? There was something else I needed to buy. And it was something linked with Black Friday. Because it's in a watch list. Right. It'll have to come back to me. Um, and then my to-do list is going to be writing out my Christmas cards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish writing this... Um, kind of like off camera because I I am very aware that like my videos appear to be getting longer and longer and not everybody wants to spend 30, 35 minutes listening to me prattling on about things and tap tap tapping away on my typewriter. So I'm going to finish this off camera and then I will come back and then I will show you everything that I have done. So see you on the other side. So I've done my Christmas card list and now as with all of the videos and bits and pieces um, that I've done before, I try and find a quote or something that I feel possibly uh, represents uh, something that I need to focus on or something, you know, that is important to me. Um, going back on the start of this video obviously I discussed something I'm not going to use those words again because like I say some people may find it triggering I found a quote which I think is quite important and also um I need to just take a little bit of a breath there um, many of you that might know me know that I absolutely adore Queen and Freddie Mercury and the 24th of November is the anniversary of Freddie Mercury's death. I'm very sorry. Some parts of this video have been a little bit, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a downer, and it's not been my intention. Um, Freddie Mercury, the world's best showman, and he wrote and sang a song called "The Show Must Go On." It was released on the fourth of February in 1991. And as previously said, uh, Freddie Mercury died on the 24th of November, 1991. The lyrics of The Show Must Go On are incredible. They are simplistic, but it, it's very obvious it was reflective of how he was feeling, how his heart was feeling, and how he kept it in for such a long, long time. Um, I wasn't very old when... Freddie Mercury died but I remember it being in the news and I remember it being one day it was confirmed that Freddie Mercury had HIV and AIDS one day and then literally the next day Freddie Mercury was gone uh, very much reflective of uh, David Bowie David Bowie didn't have HIV and AIDS he released his album Lazarus and two days later he was gone and no apologies the album was black star and he released the song which i believe is called lazarus and again a very very touching touching song 
that just proves how brave, how brave and incredible they were, both of them. Um, this quote from the lyrics, the show must go on, is for every woman who has suffered a loss, because I think that these words are very reflective of how they feel and how society expects them to be. And so the quote is, inside my heart is breaking, my makeup may be flaking, but my smile still stays on. And that's not what I'm going to type. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I haven't made people too sad or too down. Um, apologies if I have, that has not been my intent. My intent is to get people to talk more freely about it. I know that it can sometimes be very, very uncomfortable for people to hear it because they don't know what to say. And what can you sometimes say other than, I'm sorry and are you okay? Just give somebody a hug. Just allow them to, to talk about it freely. And if you struggle with listening to it, then be honest as well and say, I, I am finding this a little bit hard and I don't know what to say to you, but I'm sorry. Anyway, next week will be um, a lighter video. Hopefully I won't lose the footage. And have a lovely week. Take care, everyone. I'll carry on typing. I'm worried I'm going to hit the wrong one. <laughs> Is it this one or this one? Ooh. Let's do that to be on the safe side. Oh no. There you go. See you next time.